episode in the Master Tech series covers the servicing of ball and ball dual barrel carburetors, more commonly referred to as the BBD models. Heading the cast of characters is Don Hecker, carburetor and engine performance expert. Tom Winters, an eager to learn young technician, has a supporting role in our story. As usual, I'll supply the prompting, needling if necessary, intermission warning, and the closing commentary. So on with our story, and the next voice you hear will be Don Hecker's. The carburetor and the automatic choke are probably two of the most frequently misunderstood, neglected, tinkered with, and unnecessarily overhauled parts of the automobile, Tom. There's nothing much that can wear or go wrong inside the carburetor. Of course, if someone feeds it a slug of water or dirty fuel, that can cause plenty of problems. But this kind of trouble isn't common, and it's easy to spot if it does happen. Now, don't get me wrong. I know that the choke and carburetor aren't completely foolproof and trouble-free. As a matter of fact, fuel system problems are more common than they ought to be. But more often than not, the trouble is some simple external adjustment or dirty or sticking external linkages. All carburetor linkages should be clean and dry. Never lubricate a link or lever because dirt will stick to the oil and cause real trouble. That's good advice, Tom. And now it's time to get acquainted with the hardware. Let's start with the choke. The well-type choke seldom ever fails. It should not be lubricated and no periodic service or adjustments are required. The most common cause of choke trouble is deliberate misadjustment of the choke in an attempt to correct some other problem. Here's all there is to choke unit inspection. Make sure the choke linkage is clean, operates freely without binding in the manifold well, is set at correct index notch according to the service manual or latest service bulletins. Choke settings are not the same for all BBD carburetors, so check the specifications. The most common mistake is to blame the choke when the trouble is incorrect vacuum kick adjustment or possibly a sticking manifold heat control valve. If the manifold heat control valve freezes up, it usually sticks in the open position, and warm-up performance will be very poor. As a matter of fact, the engine will run like a cold one, even when fully warmed up. I understand that, but why is vacuum kick so important? When vacuum kick is correctly adjusted, the vacuum diaphragm pulls the choke valve open to allow just enough airflow to keep the cold engine running during warm-up. If the kick opening is too narrow, the engine will load up and roll. If it's too wide, the mixture will be too lean, and the engine will stall. The service manual has all the vacuum kick specs and also explains how to make the adjustment. However, I want to pass on a couple of tips and warnings. A choke modulating spring is built into the stem of the vacuum kick diaphragm unit. This spring must be fully compressed when checking the vacuum kick opening of the choke valve. Here's what will happen if the modulating spring isn't fully compressed when vacuum kick is adjusted. When the cold engine is started, the vacuum diaphragm pulling against the choke closing force will compress the spring and the choke valve won't be open far enough to let a cold engine breathe properly. How does that modulating spring work and what does it do? When the engine's cold, the thermostatic choke coil pushes the choke valve all the way closed. As soon as the engine starts, the vacuum kick pulls the choke valve part way open. The modulating spring is fully compressed. As the thermostatic choke coil warms up, it relaxes and doesn't push hard enough to keep the spring compressed. So the modulating spring helps open the choke as the engine warms up. The balance between the modulating spring and the choke coil gives much better choke valve control and greatly improves warm-up performance. To adjust vacuum kick, a pair of pliers works fine for squeezing the loop in the vacuum kick link to increase choke valve opening. A twist of a screwdriver blade easily opens up the loop to decrease choke valve opening. But let me warn you, a small change in the bend of the loop makes quite a big change in the vacuum kick opening, so take it easy and be very exact when you adjust vacuum kick, even if you have to bend and check several times. I have a question about that adjustment. The service manual says you have to have 10 inches of vacuum on the diaphragm when checking vacuum kick. Haven't I seen you do it by sucking on the vacuum kick hose? <laughs> it looks like you caught me, so I better explain, Tom. With a little practice, mouth vacuum works fine, providing you make sure the diaphragm's fully retracted. Besides, if you stick your tongue on the end of the tube to hold the vacuum when you check the kick opening, you'll detect even a small diaphragm leak before it gets big enough to cause trouble. 
<laughs> Don's little trick's a good one, Tom. But you better stick to a mechanical vacuum source until your inhaling mechanism and kick-adjusting technique are fully educated. I'll do that, Tech. What's next? Sticking choke valve shafts in fast idle cams probably caused just about as many starting and warm-up problems as incorrect vacuum kick adjustment. Here's why these troubles are a lot more common than they ought to be. The gum-type deposits that cause the choke shaft or fast idle cam to stick when the engine's cold loosen up when the engine's warm. By the time the owner gets to the service department, the choke and cam are completely free and the technician can't find anything wrong. Besides, Squirting solvent on the shaft or cam when the engine's hot probably won't cure the problem because the solvent evaporates before it gets a chance to wash out the gum. The best cure for this trouble is prevention. Flush out the choke shaft and fast idle cam every six months. I perform this little service any time I work on a job where the air cleaner has to come off. Be sure and use a solvent that doesn't leave a sticky film, Tom. Our Chrysler carburetor cleaner works fine. Don't ever use penetrating or any other kind of oil. And don't get solvent into the vacuum kick diaphragm. I'll remember that, but why are the choke shaft and cam so critical? It takes very little gum on the choke shaft to hang it up so that the choke won't close. This is particularly true and particularly troublesome after a car has been parked overnight. As for the fast idle cam, it's supposed to fall open from its own weight as the choke opens. If the cam sticks, the engine will continue to race after it's warmed up. In addition to being very annoying, this can waste a lot of gas. Fast idle cam indexing is also very important, too, because it ensures that the fast idle cam will be on the correct step for the amount of choke opening during warm-up. This adjustment must be made before adjusting fast idle speeds. What if the indexing isn't right? Incorrect fast idle cam position is a common cause of stalling during warm-up. This is particularly bad when conditions are right for carburetor icing. If the fast idle rod is too long, idle speed will drop off too soon. If it's too short, the engine will stay on fast idle after the choke opens. Cam indexing is checked with a fast idle screw against the shoulder of the fast idle step. It is adjusted by bending the upper angle of the fast idle cam rod. You'll find detailed instructions for doing this on or off the vehicle in your service manuals. The manuals also cover the fast idle speed adjustment. You won't have any trouble following the manual instructions. Just make sure when adjusting fast idle that the engine is fully warmed up and the adjusting screw is resting on the second step of the fast idle cam, not the start step. Next comes the accelerator pump and the bowl vent. I'll cover the one and one quarter inch BBD first and then explain what's different about the one and one half inch model. The accelerator pump linkage connects the pump plunger to the throttle lever. When the pump rod is in the outer hole of the throttle lever, the plunger is raised to its highest position. This provides the longest pump stroke. The middle hole is for the medium stroke and the inner hole is for a short stroke. On the one and one quarter inch carburetor, the pump rod should be in the middle hole of the throttle lever for all normal operating conditions. The long stroke outer hole may be used for extremely cold climates and the inner hole for very hot climates. Now notice, the accelerator pump stem has three hairpin clip notches. The clip is slipped into one of these notches and it lifts the bowl vent valve off the bowl cover. Before any pump adjustments are made, make sure the spring clip is in the correct notch of the pump stem. The upper notch is for the inner hole of the throttle lever, middle notch for the middle hole, lower notch for the outer hole. Why is that so important? If the gauge specified in the service manual will slip under the vent valve when the throttle is fully closed, the accelerator pump rod is the correct length. If the clip isn't in the correct notch of the pump stem, the pump stroke will be too long or too short. Here's why correct vent opening is so important. If the vent valve opening is too wide, the vent will stay open as the throttle is cracked and atmospheric pressure on the fuel in the float bowl will make the off-idle mixture too rich. As a result, low-speed economy will suffer and emissions will be high. If the vent opening is too narrow or the valve doesn't open at closed throttle, vapor pressure will push fuel out of the fuel bowl and into the intake manifold. This will contribute to rough idle, stalling, and hot start problems. Any questions so far, Tom? Just one, Don. 
Tom's question is on the other side of the record. So turn it over so we can hear what it is. How about those two holes in the outer end of the pump lever? The hole at the outer end of the pump lever is not used on any of our current model carburetors. So just pretend it isn't there and use the inner hole. Next, Don will explain what's different about the one and one half inch BBD. On the one and one half inch carburetor, the accelerator pump stroke measurement is made from the top of the pump plunger shaft to the face of the air horn casting. Throttle valves fully seated in their bores. The bow vent opening on this carburetor is a separate adjustment. To set vent opening, bend the short tang on the vent valve operating lever. Vent opening must always be adjusted after adjusting the pump stroke. In other words, the pump stroke and the vent opening are adjusted separately on this carburetor, and the vent must always be readjusted after the stroke is adjusted. Right, Tom. Now, the choke unloader adjustment on this carburetor is made by bending the tang on the fast idle lever. The unloader must open the choke one quarter inch when the throttle is wide open. On the one and one quarter inch carburetor, the adjustment is made by bending the unloader tang on the throttle lever. The one quarter inch specification is the same for both BBD carburetors. Misunderstanding and improper use of the choke unloader by the owner is probably more common than incorrect unloader adjustment. If a customer has starting problems caused by engine flooding, maybe the driver's starting habits need fixing, not the carburetor. Be sure an owner with this kind of trouble understands that he must hold the accelerator wide open and do quite a bit of cranking to clear a flooded engine. Too often, owners don't crank the engine long enough, or worse, they release the throttle every time they stop cranking. When they floorboard the accelerator and start cranking a second time, the accelerator pump gives the engine another shot of fuel, which only increases the problem. If owners would only follow the starting instructions in the owner's manual, we'd have far fewer starting complaints. What's next on the program, Don? Idle mixture and idle speed adjustments, Tech. There's no point in covering the service manual word for word. However, I think a review of the idle speed and mixture adjusting procedures will give a better idea of why certain steps are very important. Idle mixture and speed adjustment go hand in hand. The objective is to arrive at the correct idle speed, correct air-fuel ratio, and correct balance between the two idle systems of the dual barrel carburetor. To accomplish this, the engine must be properly warmed up, the ignition timing must be correct, use an accurate tachometer, and connect an exhaust analyzer to check air-fuel ratio. The first step is to make sure the analyzer is indicating correctly. To accomplish this, adjust idle speed to specifications, then open each idle mixture screw one sixteenth of a turn. Wait ten seconds and read the exhaust analyzer. The meter reading should move numerically lower, indicating that the mixture is getting richer. If one sixteenth turn doesn't produce a richer mixture reading, turn each screw another sixteenth of a turn richer. Wait ten seconds and check the reading. Repeat this procedure as necessary until the meter registers a definite increase in richness. I better explain why this step is so important. As the mixture becomes very lean, there is a point at which the analyzer indicates that the mixture is getting richer when it is actually getting leaner as the idle mixture screws are closed. To eliminate this possibility, always make your final adjustment by going from rich to lean. I get it. By adjusting one sixteenth of a turn at a time until the meter moves in the richer direction, you make sure the mixture is on the rich side and the meter isn't fibbing. Exactly, Tom. And once this is established, adjust both mixture screws one sixteenth at a time until the air-fuel ratio is within specifications, 14 to 14.4, and engine idle is okay. Actually, about 14.2 is the best ratio for most of our engines. You must keep one eye on the tack when adjusting idle mixture and readjust idle speed to specifications if it changes. Before you button the job up, make sure the air-fuel ratio is within limits and idle performance is okay. What if engine idle is on the rough side? If the engine is mechanically okay, ignition timing is correct, and both idle speed and air-fuel ratio are within specs, chances are that engine idle operation will be acceptable. If engine idle is still rough, you may have to balance the two idle systems. 
You do this by removing the plastic caps from the mixture screws and seating both of these screws. Next, open both screws one and one half turns to establish a starting point. From there on, you follow the same idle mixture and speed adjusting procedure, just as you would if the plastic stops were in place. Just make sure you always adjust both screws the same amount each time, so you don't upset the balance between the two idle systems. And there's one more unusual idle mixture condition you ought to know about. After prolonged idling, the entire engine is apt to get hotter than normal. If this happens when you are adjusting idle mixture, you'll wind up with an air-fuel ratio that is too lean. How come, Tech? If the carburetor gets abnormally hot, the fuel can boil, and a lot of fuel vapor will be pushed into the carburetor along with the regular idle mixture. The analyzer will show the mixture is okay, then when the carburetor cools down and stops supplying this extra vapor, the mixture will be too lean. To spot this condition, remove the exhaust analyzer probe. Run the engine at about 2,000 RPM for about 30 seconds to get rid of some of the excess heat, and then let it drop back to idle. If the meter shows that the mixture is now leaner, you'd better readjust it. The important thing is to recognize and understand this problem so you don't turn out tune-up jobs with carburetors that are running too lean for decent idle performance. The one and one half inch BBD idle setup is a little different. There's a single mixture screw and the two individual idle mixture limiter screws are plugged and not normally adjusted. However, if idle is objectionably rough or you can't get rid of low speed surge, you may have to unplug and readjust the limiter screws. If limiter screw adjustment is required, you start by establishing mixture screw position. To do this, turn the mixture screw counterclockwise to seat it. Then open it three quarters of a turn. Next, turn both limiter screws clockwise to seat them and then open them one and one half turns. These initial adjustments will give you a starting point. Now, adjust both limiter screws one sixteenth turn at a time to obtain an air fuel ratio that's within specifications. This will establish correct balance between the two idle systems and final adjustment can be made with a single mixture screw. You'll find the step-by-step -step details in your service manuals. As a matter of fact, before the end of the model year, you'll probably see some one and one half inch BBDs with a single mixture screw eliminated and two mixture screws added with plastic limiting tabs just like the one and one quarter inch model. And that's one I hadn't heard about. Of course, you should always make sure that air horn screws and carburetor mounting nuts are tight and intake manifold cap screws are correctly torqued. There's one common misadjustment I'd better mention. If someone disconnects a fuel line from the carburetor without holding the fuel inlet fitting, chances are the float level will be upset. That's about the only way float level can change without taking the carburetor apart. As a matter of fact, float level is the only internal adjustment and it is very important. A float level that's too high or too low can cause a wide variety of problems. So if external adjustments don't take care of a complaint, you better check float level. Before the curtain comes down on this session, I want to warn you about the importance of installing a carburetor stand or legs to protect the throttle valves as soon as you remove a carburetor from the engine. It doesn't take much of a bump to nick them or knock them out of alignment. If that happens, you'll never get the two sides of the carburetor balanced or engine idle smoothed out. Here's a good clue to possible throttle valve misalignment. If, after adjusting idle mixture and speed to specifications, there's enough vacuum to advance ignition timing at idle, it means the vacuum port is uncovered. This could indicate that either one of the throttle valves is out of alignment. I'm afraid that'll have to be Don's final word of wisdom for this session. However, there's a lot more information on the BBD carburetors in this month's reference book, so be sure and look it over. And don't miss our next meeting. It's going to be all about four-barrel carburetor features and adjustments. Y'all come see me next month here. Yeah?